Hello everybody, welcome to day eight, is it? I think day eight of our uh, Lake District landscape. It's taken a bit of a while, but we've chatted along the way and had a really nice time. Well, I've had a really nice time. I just, um, no, well, I'll give you a weather forecast as well. Well, I'll give you current weather details. It's absolutely hammering it down. I don't think it could rain any harder if it tried. It's really banging against the windows and it's the middle of August. I don't know what's going wrong here, but however. I, I wouldn't, I've wouldn't. i laid out this piece because I wondered if you'd like to see it. It's It was a piece I did for my degree. It's felt. Um, felt onto a bit of um, embroidery stabiliser by the look of that. I can't actually, I can't really remember making this, but it's, um, yeah, hand felted together. And then all of this, all, all of these marks here are tiny little French knots, which I particularly like that bit, actually. Um, and I like the way these greens have melded together. And then we've got these two sheep. And when you're felting, you get things... Um, I can't even remember what you call them, but they're like little knobbly bobbly things and you felt them in and it's given the sheep a really interesting looking coat, I think. Um, and then the moon and the shades in the sky. Um, and then I use my sewing machine to go around the outline of the bare trees because it must be winter time. Um, and also just put some little lines in the landscape. So there it is. It was all, all hand done, really. And um, I'm particularly fond of it, actually. I really quite like that, which is unusual. Usually by the time I've finished a piece of work, I've had quite enough of it. But that's, that's still in the house, so we're doing well. Karen says hi. Oh, Karen, you've been on my mind all morning. I hope that, um, I hope you're okay. For anyone else that's watching, please, Karen needs a few positive vibes sending her way. So... I've been thinking about her all morning, I really have. And if any of you can send some positivity Karen's way, it would be great. Really nice to have you with us, Karen. Thank you. Karen says, I'll be crafted at half price sale on acrylic paints and brushes and arty stuffs. Do they? Oh, no. Which is, it's very pretty. Oh, thank you. And this, you may remember me saying to you, I was going to be doing some art journal pages and I'd, to that end I'd bought my art journal um, and I just wanted to have a little experiment really. So this is a piece of card that I've cut to the same size as the spread in my art journal and I'm just having a bit of a play really with some things that I've got, I've had for years, I've no idea if this still work or not so I thought rather than muck up a page in my lovely new sketchbook journal I would do it on here. And this has got all sorts of things on it. It's got card, it's got lace, it's got masking tape, string. Um, I've stenciled through with some modelling paste here. And it's actually pearl modelling paste and it's really, really pretty. I don't know if you can see that, but it's it really catches the light. Um, and all this yummy, yummy... Look at, look at this stuff here. You can squash it in and it just jumps back up. Can you see that? Is it yummy? They might have squashed it too much this last time. You squash it in. Look at it, it comes back up. It's like, it's got a sort of slight feel of, of rubber to it, actually. It's all weird. It's all very weird. But it is giving this really yummy texture that, uh, that I'm looking for. So I stamped on, uh, that was one stamp, one flower. So I stamped it three times to give me... Um, the, that little flower vignette there um, and that's what I've been amusing myself with this morning but watch this space really because I'm going to finish this probably this weekend and I'll post a picture when it's done and then you'll know when I say I'm going to do an art journal live you'll kind of know what what to expect and whether you're interested or, or not in watching it there's some really nice techniques going on you know some some things that I think you could take onto doing crates or little boxes or whatever. Maybe even furniture. I'm not sure about that. 
Um, so that's what I've been doing today. All right. Now. Okay. Um, yeah, I was showing the the uh, showing everybody earlier this piece of felting that I did, which now must be ten years ago. It must be about ten years ago, um, and I did it for my degree. Uh, we had to do a lot of different disciplines and my degree was actually textile art so uh, a lot of my pieces are textiles this is felting it's pure 100 percent merino wool uh, and you, it's just a whole process that you go through uh, so this was hand rolled out and then all these little bits of embroidery that you see they're all french knots the sheep have got some sort of knobbly bobbly woolly stuff in them um, and then a, a machine stitched around the trees to make them stand out and just a couple of lines along here just to give the idea that the grass was moving in that direction and then this pretty bit down here which I don't know might be foxgloves or something it's just some pretty flowers really in the corner so as I was saying earlier a lot of my stuff I didn't particularly like it was more a question of jumping through hoops really um, but this piece I like and we've kept it. I've never I've never had it framed or put up or anything. But every time I'm searching through things and I come across it, I, I smile and I like it. So that's, that's that. Just showing you that out of interest, really. So I think it's time to crack on. Because I have to tell you people that I won't be here tomorrow. I know that is a real shocker. That's something in life. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Um, something in my life has come up that is going to stop me doing a live at four o'clock. I feel like I've been doing them forever. Um, and I quite like it, actually. It's just part of the day. It's part of what goes on. Uh, I, I love the social interaction with you guys. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to uh, I'm going down to Yorkshire. There's not very many people can say that. Um, most of you who live in this country would be coming north but uh, I live much further north than Yorkshire so it's about a hundred miles away where I'm going and it's a thing called Art Fest and all the people whose product I like and getting into the um, art journals different products that you can see being demonstrated and you can tell whether you know you're interested in them or you're not are they going to perform um do some service for you that you you would like and it's great if you can see things being demoed because you've then got a bit more clue what they do otherwise you send for it from jackson's or wherever it comes it's in a pot you know i've got loads of pots like that you know i just don't know what to do with them so uh, i'm looking forward to that tomorrow very much indeed and who knows we might even have lunch out which would be uh nice for us because we never do that so anyway, come on, let's crack on with this and enough chit-chat here. So yesterday after you left me, I just put in, well, you can see the colours I've put in since yesterday. I put a bit of bright down here because this is where the sun is. I just I just put a bit of background in. And for the heather, this is that uh, hooker's green deep hue. It's not, uh, it's not black as you, you might be reading it. It's actually dark green. So let's get cracking. I've got a, loads of brushes here. I'll tell you what they are as, as we go along. So I'm going to put out some greens. That's um, the ARA sap green. I'm definitely going to put out this um, fluid gold, green gold, green gold. I'm going to put out some yellow in case we need to lighten something up at some stage. Don't really need much of that at all. I'm going to put out this Jackson's olive green. It can sometimes be a handy colour. Um, what else have I got that I might need? I've, I've got all the other colours there. That I might, I don't think I need that lightest green and this is a very bright green but I might find a use for it. Ugh. 
I haven't even played with my Sennelier Metallics yet with their fancy nozzles. Well, that's the point, Karen. I haven't. I, haven't, I really haven't saved up. I've been buying bits here, there and everywhere and all my art money's disappeared. Fortunately for me, Mr. Fix-It's coming. <laughs> so he better have some money. <laughs> I'm not sure that he has, but he'll find some somewhere. I'm telling myself I'm not going to buy anything. I'm just going to see how things work. That's what I'm actually telling myself. And, you know, sometimes it even sounds plausible. <laughs> oh, dear me. Right, Karen, let's just address this from the start. Here is the snowman. Okay? There's his face. There's... Well, he was, but he's, now he's dried. He's turned into the snowman. There's his... Uh, this arm, his right arm. There's his left arm, and there's his body there. Can you see that? See, it's not just you. I did also see some sort of chimpanzee face over here, but um, I don't want to see it, so I'm not going to search for it again. Right, let's get cracking. Says, hi. hi, Jacqueline. I'm hoping so, too. <laughs> Fingers crossed. That was my... Pocket money that you give me. <laughs> Pocket money. Right, I'm just going to go for something quite bright along the top of, of here, because if you remember, that's where the, the light's coming from. So I'm loading my brush with just a little bit of yellow and a little bit of that green gold. And it's just where the sun hits it. So it's not really a solid line. To give the impression that it's a bit uneven, this uh, ground here. There's absolutely no point painting grass grasses, should I say, onto this bit here. If you have a look at your picture, there's no way you can see details of grass. So, you know, given that, there's no way you should be painting grasses on there. So actually, I think that's, it's pretty much done. How painless was that? Surely it can't be. <laughs> if you really want to get pedantic about it, you could go back and you could put some dark under there and stuff. But I'd love to get this finished today. Um, and then I can go off tomorrow on my little spendy trip and uh, not have to worry about leaving you in the lurch. Although, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you'll be happy to have a day off. <laughs> Oh dear, we seem to have been at this for a while. It's been a good laugh though. And I feel like I've really got to know some of you as well, which is really nice. So this is very dark down in here. It's possibly even darker than that. Yeah, Can you still see that? I tried to send a photo of the painting. Um, she didn't know how to. So you need to go to Miss Paintwalk's art group. Um, yeah. I don't know why. Why do you need to go there? Because that's where you post it, isn't it? You can't post oh, anything. you can't post them as paint a lot. No, that's right. No, you can't po post in chat, can you? She can't post oh, no, it no, here. you can't. No. Which I assume is what she's trying to do. Ah, right. No, no, you can't. So once again, I'm doing something very similar to what I did on this part here, except I'm doing it uh, in a darker colour than the colour we made the background if that makes sense, which I'm kind of hoping it does. No, we have to go to Miss uh, Duda paint a lot, I've forgotten my own name. Oh, 
we just want to give the impression that this is uneven ground. Don't need to go overly overboard with it because we're going to come in and put some grass on this bit because this bit's much closer to us and we can see some details on there. Just going to pick up just a little bit of dark on its own and just put some little bits in. Just try and give it a bit of texture. Okay. Oops. Now, let's just address this. Let's address the grasses that we can see that are there. Um, for that, I am going to use. Um, if I can find it, this one, my sword brush. It's a good friend to have in situations like this because it gives you really nice thin lines and you can control it. If you have, you know, if you haven't got a sword brush, all is not lost. You can use your quarter inch angle shader, this fella, or you can use, um, Just been using these and they really work. Or you can use um, a fan brush on on its side. Gives you quite a nice mark. I've got a really old this one, which is really old and kind of jiggered, but it's good for doing grasses. Um, it's also good for doing splatters. I haven't got any paint on, so you're all right. So. Um, yeah, you can do your grasses that way, um, or you can do them with your quarter inch angle shader. Susan says hi. Hi, Susan. Hope you're all right today and doing well. I'm really sorry you've had a rough week. These things happen, don't they? Life, life happens. It's all a conspiracy to stop us painting. So let's let's just mix up some light colour. And go in with those with grasses in those colour, in that colour, even. So you remember what I told you about the the dagger brush, sword brush, or striper. It's known as all of those things. It is ostensibly a watercolour brush, and it will not perform properly with heavy body paints. It just can't push them around. Hasn't got the strength. So. I mean, actually here I'm using two fairly liquid, this one's definitely a uh, golden fluid acrylic, and this yellow from La Salle is fairly um, slack as well. But even so, I'm still going into my water, bringing water back and making a puddle up, a very slack puddle. And I'm loading my brush, stroking it one way, stroking it the other, and you will have a lot of paint in there, holds a lot of paint when you load it that way. The thing to be careful of is because you've got so much water around, you don't want the tip of your brush to be really watery because it won't work. So let's just make a start here with, with some bits of grass. Mum says you use that brush for nail art. Oh really? The the dagger one? I presume so, because you get a very fine point on it. Yeah, you do. And Susan says she's had a good day today, carried away with painting. Oh, good. That's good. It is a real therapy art, you know. So make your grasses different lengths, different widths, um, and don't don't make them uniform. I mean, look at that. They're all like centuries there. Um, and, you know, don't forget that some actually do go the other way. I'm left-handed, so as a general rule, my grass always goes to the left. So I have to really think about it, put your grasses in going the other way. 
So as soon as we've got this paint mixed up, we'll just carry on using it for a little, a little while and then we'll come back. See how fine those lines are? Let me hold this up to you. Uh, is it focusing there? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're really, really, really fine. Actually, I've got a, I've got a finer brush than that somewhere. You don't need to see it. I have got a brush that's literally got about three hairs in it, and I use those for like cat's whiskers and stuff. So I'm just randomly placing these um, light green bits and you get the best results with these light green bits over where you've made a darker uh, background for them. So like Karen, no I think it was Jacqueline was saying yesterday, you think ahead. You have to think ahead otherwise if I'd made that grass the same colour as this, well, you couldn't see it, you know. So you have to think ahead a little bit. So it's pretty much a matter of, um, as they get closer to us at the front, they do get larger. So they'll get thicker and larger. Don't fill it all up with the one colour because that would be really unrealistic. But I do love this colour. I really like um, an item of furniture in this colour. Got quite a lot of tan uh, tangerine. <laughs> Tangerine furniture. <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> That's quite funny. Um, it's not the 70s anymore. <laughs> turquoise. Teal. No, it's turquoise. It's not really teal furniture uh, in my living room that I've all painted uh, myself. But now I'm thinking that I, I love this chartreuse sort of colour. I'm in the midst of this heather. There will be areas where there's grass growing up through it. So let's just put little bits of grass. So we're ready to deal with that when it happens. See this mark that I'm getting here at the bottom? That's because I'm not being careful enough. When I put it down, I'm putting too much of the of the brush down. So you really need to be very gentle and you get a proper decent mark. So I'm fessing up to that. Right, I think that's probably sufficient. I mean most of this is Heather. But once again as we come nearer to the front it does get more visible. Right, so now we need to change the tone of the green and we need to go for something that's a little bit darker. Hello Georgia, happy Saturday. Let's move that out of the way because I think it's blocking the light. We've had to put the lights on today. Uh, I'm going to go straight for that olive because it's a very different hue to the uh, to the other colours. To the other greens it's more of a browny green um, and, and I think I think that'll play nice. So I'm making my puddle again with water, loading the brush up, checking the toes all right. Let's come in, make these ones shorter if you want or Put them sort of whole area of them, like it's a drift, drift is the word, a drift of them. Oh, across the page, 
it's not a big it's a canvas yeah so you can see can you see that all right yeah so it looks like some different weedy type stuff wish at the beginning we'd started a blinking page of adjectives that actually don't exist I'm finding this to be quite a convincing weed colour. I quite like it. Let's face it, the heather's out, which suggests that you're getting to the back end of summer. And the back end of summer is autumn. And autumn is full of browns, oranges, reds, whatever. So I'm quite happy to sort of suggest that there's, leave, there's weeds in here that are dying off. You might want to do spring. Sorry? George B says, hi, hi sweet lady, you're looking so good. <laughs> Everybody's so lovely. Everybody that joins in this chat is just so lovely. And without you, there is no way that I would be doing a live every day. Because I just just wouldn't. But you lot, you're worth it. <laughs> so I'm putting sort of thicker thicker um, blades, I guess they are, down in here. Tussocks. Tussocks, oh, tussocks. It's hard to believe now, but once I climbed a mountain, once in my life. And Mr Fixit told me, I mean, we were walking a lot at the time, um, so I wasn't a patch as unfit as I am now, of course. Um, Mr Fixit told me it was... It was just a mountain. It's just a, a mountain. It's only a couple of feet over. It clarifies it as being a mountain. It's no worse than any of the hills you've climbed. You'll be fine. Unless you're familiar with peat bog country, you don't know the pain I was through, going through. It, I don't know how far it was up to the top. It felt like it lasted for weeks. And... Um, <laughs> just, the ground was sort of tussocks, and then around that was a space, and then another tussock. So when you put your foot down, it was rocking all the time. I really, really hated it. And I grumbled all the way up, and I grumbled all the way down. <laughs> oh, dear. But I made it. We even took a photograph to prove that we did. Actually, oddly enough, the, the mountain that we climbed was called Grey Nag. <laughs> no so, irony there at all. <laughs> no irony there at all. I'm going to make a slightly darker brown. Um, where's my this here it is so I'm just going to add raw umber to that olive green because I'm liking the idea of this this weedy business let's see what that looks like when it's when it's on it's not showing up terribly well so she persevering with it no, I think we need a brighter green now. The um, That striper brush, dagger sword brush, don't leave it standing in water, people. It's so um, delicate on the end that if you leave it, it'll just bend over like that and you'll never get it back straight again. So um, give it a rinse out and lie it on your palette to remind you it needs washing. But don't leave it standing in the water. In demonstrations are letting you to do them horizontally, not vertically, so they can't see through your hand. Technology just hasn't caught up, has it? <laughs> Fair enough. Just remind me the next time I do it that I'm actually going wrong. You weren't wrong. No, I mean that nobody can see what I'm talking about. Right, so I've mixed up some of that olive green, which had the raw umber in, and I mixed it up with this colour, which is bright yellow green. I like a colour that tells you what it is. I can't be doing with these fancy names and you've got to work out what the name is. Bright yellow green, that's great. Right, so let's just add some of these where we think it needs. It's actually come out pretty olive green that I'm going to add some more of that bright yellow green 
to it. There we go. So you can leave some gaps in it. There's a, a gap there, and I'm going to leave a gap here because, as I tell you, I know firsthand it's tussocky. And so there are gaps in it, just waiting for your foot to hurt your ankle. I'm still moaning about it now. <laughs> Years later, I'm going to add a bit of yellow to that, give it a bit of vibrancy, I think. See, nearer the front, sort of the, the more detail you need then, really. And like I say, leave some bits without the grass in it to give the idea that um, it's not just an even, that it's not on an even keel. Who amongst us is? Right, so I think that gives the impression that I was after, pretty much. Right, so the next thing that we need to do is to move on to the heather because um, this comes after. So let's let's do just that then. Let's move on to the heather. Right, let's get some heather colours going. Um, I will lay out the dioxazine purple. Um, I'll lay out this one, which is called purple. I mean, Sennelier, you've got it right. What colour is it? It's purple. Um... She's, she's about to go out shopping and have lunch. Sharon? She, she, she'll hang out with you until her husband's home. Thank you. Well, I hope you have a really nice day shopping and I hope you get out for a really nice lunch. I'm sure I had more purples than this in my life. I've got this one, but it's not the right colour. It's too, it's called light violet and it is, it is a light violet. So anyway, it doesn't matter. We can mix any sort of purple we want from these ones. I've actually also laid out the Prussian blue today, um, just in case I needed a really darker, a dark dark. That, actually, I'll put two bits on it because I need to mix some up uh, to make lights. I've got these very dark darks in, so I think I'll be all right. I won't need the Prussian blue, but we'll see as we progress. I'm going to put a bit of that out and a bit of that that I can mix with. So let's have a look at our... Let's not have a look at our picture because it hasn't got any heather on it. <laughs> That's quite funny. Right, let's assume then that the heather goes here and that there are three shades of it as there are with everything. So we need it. He's got to run. It's 11.35, so she's got to run. So she'll catch up with you later. All right, okay, have a nice time, whatever you're up to. Uh, yeah, be, catch me on replay. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so we need our three hues. We need a dark, we need a lighter than that and a darker than that. The darkest we're going to get is this uh, dioxazine purple, so we leave that. The next one I'm suggesting is a mixture of these two. And then the next one is that mixed with some white. Everybody with me? This is dioxazine purple on its own. This is dioxazine purple with that Sennelier colour purple. And I'm going to mix them together, which will be our main colour. And this will then be our highlights, but it will need to be lighter than that, I think. So I need to mix it with some either pink or white. But let's just see how we get on. Right, so... Oh. Where's my two-foot stippler? Oh, oh, here it is. <sighs> Did you hear the concern in my voice there? My best friend. Right, I'm just moving it this way a bit. I have no idea why it just feels more comfortable. So with the... I'll leave the darks, actually. I'll put the mid-colour in first. So I'll just need my little spatula. So I'll mix these two up and see... Um, hopefully it won't be too dark. If it is, we can lighten it. It's not a problem. I think that's too dark for um, what we need. 
what I haven't taken into account again is the strength of the tinting power of um, the dioxazine. I mean, it's just so powerful. So I'll add some white and see where we get to with that. I'll put quite a chunk out because we need some for the for this one as well. If this doesn't come up looking like the colour we want, I'm going to add some um, pink to it. You know, I think it's a bit of a sort of goldy pink. I don't know, it's coming together quite nicely. I'm just going to have a look and see what I've got in the world of, oh yeah, look at that, a ready mixed pink. So I'm just going to add some of that to it. Well, I would if I could get it open. I know it's really tight, isn't it? Just to fix it, it's having to go for a tool, like a pliers type tool. I'll use this time to have a little drink. Thank you. Thanks very much. I put that up there because I don't know if I need it. Um, I'll need something for that one to lighten it up. It doesn't really, I'll leave it like that, but it's not really shut. But I might need it again, so. So let's add a bit of pink into this. See if we can get a really nice colour going. I'm not overly convinced that that's actually um, heather colour. I'm just going to add a little bit of Prussian blue. Oh, Lord. Not that much Prussian blue. That's quite excessive amounts of Prussian blue. Go further away from purple. Is that purpley or not? I can't tell now. Is it blue? Should I add some red to it's it? It's on the blue end of purple. On the blue end. Well, I'm not surprised with all that Prussian blue that landed on it. from where you mix it really. Yeah, you're so right. Let's see what this does for us. It lifts that blue up a bit. Not enough paint to do the entire Cumbrian fells. I know. Isn't that the truth? No, we're still not there. That's still not right. A bit more red in it. I think we're kind of getting there. Because mixing a purple just isn't good enough. It's got to be a heather purple. Yeah, better, do you think? More red. More red. Yeah, okay. Let's just add a bit of pink to it. That can't oh, do any. Red, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sort of hedging my bets by adding pink. That's looking, That's looking all right. Yeah. No. Um, it depends whether you want early season ever or late season ever. I'm not convinced it's right. I 
and Maybe. join us tomorrow and we'll actually do some painting. That's looking better now, isn't it? That's looking better, I think. I think we're actually getting there. Become interested when we have to have a lighter shade of this. <laughs> and I've used it all yeah. up. <laughs> oh dear. No, there's nothing funny about it. Right, okay, I'm 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 call I'm calling that and I don't think it's that far away from where I want to be, really. Who ever would have thought it was so difficult to mix a purple? I didn't think it was a problem. Right, let's get cracking here. No, I think that's all right. Quite like that. So this is my deer foot stippler. It's dry, as I told you um, several times. You always use your deer foot stippler dry. Pick up some of this really delicious colour. I'm not sure it's 100% accurate, but it's a gorgeous colour. And we want to start with these sort of... Heather does grow in drifts. Very much so, actually. And invariably, you can see through to what's underneath, which is why Jacqueline and, and everybody, I'm not like picking on you, Jacqueline, you need to make sure that your underneath is good. It's a bit like make sure you've got clean pants on when you leave the house, just in case you have an accident. Pr preparation. Um, for those of you who are interested, and I know that's most of you, and if not, why not? Um, Paula will be doing her live tonight, 7 o'clock, on Fairy Chic Emporium. She's still working on that gorgeous mermaid. I mean, gorgeous. And she's got a whole no load of new merchandise available. Um, she's got mugs, towels... Um, loads of stuff and all the stuff that you really want I do really want a big fish little fish mug I really want one um, but pop over to Fairy Chic Emporium go to the shop and have a look because there's prints of her work which are really affordable um, so it's well worth uh, popping over there to have a look and also don't forget her live tonight which I'm sure you won't forget um, but it's at seven o'clock on Fairy Chic Emporium. So you see, I'm doing this, but I'm not actually covering up all of the the background because Heather is a bit like that. And don't forget, we've got to get grass in here. So you see, it's quite um, it's quite nice doing Heather. You know, so it comes in these, what I was describing to you, those tussocks. In fact, I'm going to say it, those bloody tussocks. Heaven's sake. Definitely try and leave some of the underneath uh, visible. And you don't have to have it all joined up. Heather doesn't really grow like that. Don't forget, we're coming in with a couple of other colours as well, shades of this, I mean, I mean to say. Um, so don't get panicked yet. So some bits are lighter, and then there's a bit more. As we're coming towards the front, it's probably getting a bit more rather than a bit less. You see now where we put the grasses in, it gives it um, some room to move. I like it. I'm sorry if people are chatting and Mr. Painterlock, uh, Mr. Painterlock, well, yeah, okay. Uh, Mr. Fixit isn't replying, but he's doing an experiment for me in the kitchen. <laughs> you know, that stuff that I was telling you about, that exp um, stuff that goes puffy. Um, I wanted to know whether I should paint it first or um, gesso it and then paint it. So he's doing a bit of an experiment.
and I can't see from here what what you're saying, what's going on. So I can't tell if you like my heather or not. I really hope you do. Just be careful, as I say, not to sort of join it all up because it's really not like that. You do get areas like this area that, 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 that it's sort of quite solid, it's quite a lot of it. Um, but then you get areas that it's quite open. So you see now the benefit of that pink background and the benefit of the colour that we put on over that. I just explained you were doing an experiment. Did it work? Yes. Yeah. Get them there now. Jack and said it's all been mixed. I said these are lovely. <laughs> Thank and you. Also, it's just in case the dock is a hunk. I'm not sure what that's this one. I don't know. Do you think she meant to put that on somebody else's timeline? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it might be quite personal. That. Jacqueline says that's perfect. Karen Smith says glad I've, glad I've not missed the mermaid. The mermaid. Whatever strength they are, Karen, you need to you need to drop it down. <laughs> you're amazing with paint mixes. Oh yeah, like that. Hmm, that was classic example of not being good with paint mixes. Right, so we need a darker one now. Definitely, just to go in and around there. I quite like this. I like the way it's it's spread. I like the the holes in it. What do you think, Mr. Fix It? Yes, I know. When well, I've still got the paint in my hand. No. So there's the first blocking in stage side. Well, it's not really. I wanted it to be further. What is it that it needs? Perhaps just a touch too purpley. All oh, right. Well, that's okay because um, it's getting more more hues upon it. Yeah. Right, so I pretty much used all my diox purple, but not quite. So I've still got some there that I can use for my darks. I'm still using my deer foot stippler, but I'm not actually going to be using the full thing. I'm just really going to be using. Someone says you were talking about having clean pants on. Oh, I, for I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I was just talking about pre preparation, and I was saying like wearing clean pants when you go out the door. And she said, yeah, in case the doctors are hungry, which I'd overlooked, actually, but yes. Definitely. That is definitely. But if that was the case, would you need pants? Well, everybody needs pants. So I'm just looking where I might have some sort of shadows uh, of the heather here. I'm just really just tapping in some little bits of dark to give it some dimension. I think when we put the highlights on, you're really gonna, well, not we, I'm really gonna see that it's all right. It's kind of heart and your mouth stuff until you get to that stage. But I'm quite liking it. I really hope we get into this art journal stuff, folks, because there's fun to be had with that, real fun. Probably a fortune, like, <laughs> you know, like everything else. Is that anything as soon as it says art the price just goes through the roof and you can get the same things other places that just haven't been marked as sort of art supplies um for example i wanted to drop some oil not oil not oil at all ink uh onto something i was doing um and i came across some pipettes that i've had for i don't know 10 years or whatever 
and the price of them was so little. And I remember I bought them uh, at a chemist somewhere. And when I looked them up online, they were so much more expensive if you said art. So we, we're going to have to get inventive for what we can use for our uh, art journals. So it doesn't cost us a fortune. But I do think there's fun to be had. I really do. I think there's a lot of um, self-expression that we can get on there without being too being stupidly hoity-toity about things. All right, let's just have a look at this and see see what it looks like. I think this up here needs breaking up a little bit. I'm going to have to hold it back from me. Yeah, I quite like that. Right, so now <laughs> need to mix again. So let's take a bit of this, which is our main colour, quite a lot of white. Mix that together and see. I'm anticipating having to do two uh, rounds of highlights. One a light, you know, lighter colour like this, and one a really, really light pinky white. That's what I'm expecting to have to do. That is quite a bit lighter, but I'm going to go lighter still because I know it's going to dry darker on me. Okay, that's all right then. So back in with the um, with the deer foot stippler. I'm just going to clean it off a bit because it's got that very very dark um, dioxazine. I mean, look at it. Look at the pigment in that paint, and it's just going to darken my light colour to start with. Okay. So pick up some of the light colour. Let's just work out where the sun's coming. It's coming from here, so the, sh the light parts need to be here. All on this side. Take your time. That's my best advice. Take your time. We've come this far. I don't want to spoil it now. Just turn my brush over there and I've just got a slightly more interesting mark. Hi. Hi, Ziggy. She says she's in a new workshop. She's not naked watching today. Oh, your new workshop looks fabulous. I know you both worked really hard putting it up, but it it really, really does look fabulous. How great working from home. Who needs a shop? Who wants the responsibility of all that, those bills? Becky says she uses a CBD old bottles and droppers for that. Ah, oh, right, I was talking about pipettes. 
I don't know what CBD is. Do we know what that is? I don't think I know what that is. Jacqueline, can you tell us, please? I get the feeling it's got something to do with artificial insemination. <laughs> um, but I could be wrong. So I'm just trying to hit the bits where the, the sun would naturally uh, hit them. And we've established the light's coming this way. So it's all the bits on this side that, uh, that need to get highlighted. There are certain rules in, uh, in painting that you can't get past. You know, you might like to be a rule breaker and whatever, and that's fine, there's plenty of rules that you can break, but one of the rules that you cannot break is where the light comes from. If the light is coming this way and suddenly we start putting highlights here, it's, it's wrong and your eye tells you it's wrong when you look at it. You might not be able to put your finger on it, but you'll know it's wrong. So you always need your light coming from, well, unless you're doing a still life and you've got more than one lamp. But, you know, that's not our concern at the moment. But, no, you need to um, keep an eye on where your shadows are going. Because, like I say, you look at it and you know there's something wrong. Um, anybody would, even people who don't paint, it just doesn't sit well with them. Another rule, which can be broken, uh, is perspective. Generally things, the further away they go, the smaller they go. Um, you know, if you look at a path or a road or anything, trees, a line of trees, the ones nearest to you are taller and as it goes away it gets shorter and that's perspective. And you really have to give that some thought if you're drafting your own pieces, actually. So I'm going to put a lighter colour still on top of those and then come back and see if we actually need to put any dark back in. Oh, nearly washed my brush out. Um, right, so let's add a little bit of white to that so as we get a really nice colour. And this really is just a dib dub. And not on every piece either, otherwise it ceases to be a highlight. Okay, right, let's have a look at that then and see if we need to, what we need to do. Well, there's an area here that I'm not overly delighted about. I think it needs some dark, needs split up probably and some dark put in it. Um, the rest of it, it's okay. It needs some vegetation through it, but that's all right. So let's go, yeah, let's go for that purple that we haven't used yet. I've got so much light on my brush now, I can't get a dark colour. I really don't want to wet this brush, otherwise it ceases being use useful for what we want. Okay, that's a fair bit of colour out of it. Let's just go back in at the, at the bottom here of some of these. Once again, not all of them, but some of them just look like they need a bit of cheering up. And this here I don't like at all. We're going to have to ask for Mr. Fix its candid opinion in a moment. Oh, 
Okay, right, Mr. Fix It, as you were, crack on. What shall I change? Nothing. Oh, don't say that. It needs some vegetation up through here, and I think when I do that, it'll break the bulk of it up. You know what I mean? It shows the importance of underpainting. Yeah, it sure does. It sure does. This here needs some really, really light colour on it. I just about can't get it, actually, because there's too much stuff on my brush. Right. <coughs> oh, that's it. Um, right, the vegetation that's coming up through it, back to the uh, dagger brush. And back to that brownie colour that it's... It's dried up a bit, but it's okay. So this is a kind of strawy sort of colour. Maybe need to add some more brown to it, we'll see. And just pull some vegetation up through it. Um, not, not masses, but just some to make it look kind of credible. I think you can see already it makes a huge difference. I'm just going to add the tiniest bit of brown. Oh, I've got some raw brown there already. Um, I appreciate we're at an hour, guys. I just want to get this heather finished if I can. And then on Monday, we'll just we'll finish this grass. And we'll do a complete walk around of the picture. See if there's anything we need to fix or change in any way. There's always something. Uh, to be honest, but I won't sign it until after we've done that. See with this brush, you can get different sort of marks. Um, let me give that a bit of body in there. You can push it down, and you get thicker, thicker marks coming up. It's a really good brush, this. It's one of my... love my dear foot stippler for what it does. But for what it does, I really love this um, dagger brush. So here's where I think I've got a bit of a problem with my ho uh, holly. No, heather. Um, so I'm actually going to put quite a bit of vegetation in there. To hide, ostensibly, the bit that I'm not keen on. So I'll carry on with this colour. Not everywhere. Um, and then we'll go, we'll move to a green. Of course, it's getting bigger as it gets nearer to us, so we need to take that into account. Right, let's just move into a green and put some little bits of, of vegetation. Anne says it's beautiful, we'll carry on all good. <laughs> Thank you. So just different bits. Some different sized um, grasses. That's kind of what it's like in the world of heather. We have uh, a lot of sheep on the fell here um, and actually they aren't fenced in. There's, well they are against the road but apart from that there's a whole fell and it's massive miles and miles and miles and they aren't actually fenced in um, I don't know why I'm telling you this even they are uh, what's called hefted they're hefted to the land and they sort of amazingly the mothers pass it on to their children that this is to the children being lambs that this is where you go and you don't go any further it's really it's amazing that's why things like foot and mouth really affect 
the, it affects everybody, it's horrible, but these situations where your sheep is hefted because you've got to put your animals down and then buy new ones and they haven't got a map. I don't, I've no idea why I told you that, not a clue. It's not as if you needed to know that for any reason. Just going to grab a bit of that light yellow in with this as we come forward. It's probably getting a little bit lighter. Back down into the grass down here. I think that's okay. I'm just going Carol's doing this. Hi, Carol. She said, Oh no, I missed you again today. It's so hot here. I fell asleep. We'll watch and share the replay. The uh, sleep, I'm sure, will do you much more good than watching this. Um, but yeah, watch on replay, and you're always so good with sharing. I mean, that brings me to a point, really. If if any of you think that any of your friends or any groups that you're in would be interested in watching this, please can you share to it? It, it makes a huge difference to me because I get people I know who like my page, which makes the whole thing grow. So if you feel that you can, that would be lovely. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm just going to go in with a little bit of dark to some of the bottom of this. I just think we've lost it a little bit. I just need to work out what's where. And as soon as I've done this, I'm leaving. Well, leaving. I'm not leaving, but I am leaving you behind for the day. Well, two days. For those of you that missed it earlier, I'm actually going out tomorrow. It's it's really rare for me. Um, I don't go out very often. Hi, Michael. Annabelle. Yeah. Um, Jacqueline says they have African swine epidemic in Bulgaria. Oh, do you? That doesn't sound too great either, to be fair. Does it? Doesn't sound great. And uh, she says she's shared a lot. Oh, thank you so much. Who was that? Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline. Thank you, Jacqueline. This, of course, will be taken over by the long grasses down this side, so don't fret too much about that. I'm just really putting some dark in, just to seat the heather, really. And I think, as you can see, the bits I've done and the bit I haven't, it's probably working all right. It's quite weird for me because I'm working on this so close to myself. Um, and yet when I put it up uh, in the evening to look at, it looks completely different to me because I'm looking at it from sort of six foot, eight foot away. Um, and, it, you know, it tends to look better than what I thought it looked when I'm six inches away from it. I don't like that bit in there. This is the joy about painting your painting. Any bits you don't like, just reassess them, shall we say. This is the position. Can't chuck in share to my page on my phone. Oh, I know. It's the right curse. I hate the um, Facebook mobile app. I really... gets my goat. I mean, so much so that I'm actually considering buying an iPad. Because I just can't, I don't seem to be able to do anything pretty much on my um, phone. It's not like it's an old phone, because it's not. This is awesome. Have a wonderful day out. Thank you. I might take a picture while I'm out and post it. So you see that I'm not just skiving my duties. I am actually doing research. <laughs> doing re yeah, that's right. I'm doing research. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll all be glad when I come back with all these things and show you them and they all cost a fortune and you'll be going off for God's sake I'm not buying those it costs a fortune, neither will we. yeah that's true actually 
I know, but, you know, all the things that we found since we started thinking about art journal pages, it's amazing. I don't, I, we've got some vast amount of stuff. Accumulated over many years. Yeah, absolutely. Mostly by Mr. Fixit's fair hand from skunking around eBay and God knows where else. Right, I think that's not too bad. What do you think? You have to let it dry to tell. I'm going to have to let it dry, but I'll tell you, I think it might be just a cast or two too purple. But I'll let it dry. It will bed, bed itself down. It's got two days to think about life. Um... I don't dislike it, I don't think. I think it's coming together. All right, then. So I won't see you tomorrow, but I will see you on Monday. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Don't forget Paula's Live at 7 o'clock today on Fairy Chic Emporium. Oh, I'll just show you these again in case the latecomers didn't, didn't get to see them. This is a piece uh, I did for my degree. My degree was textile art, so um, a lot of the pieces are in textiles. This is felt, and it's felted onto some machine embroidery. Actually, it's not. It wasn't. It was felted onto this white wool, and then when I wanted to do the sewing, I put the machine embroidery behind it so it wouldn't catch on the machine. All of this down here and down here and down here is uh, French knots, so you can imagine how long that took to do. Yeah, so all of this and this, there's some ones running up here and all of this. This is my favourite piece in the whole picture. So it's just two sheep in the moonlight and uh, I just find it pleasing. And uh, this is what I've been playing with today. Uh, you may remember I talked about some uh, art journals. So I thought rather than start in my actual art journal, which is so precious to me at the moment because it's new, I would do a, cut, a piece of card at the same size as the art journal and just have a little bit of a play, see what I've got and what it does, etc. So that's as far as we've got, but when it's finished I will post up a picture uh, on Facebook so you can have a look and see if it's something you think you might fancy doing or not. Uh, if it is, pop over to the poll that's on Miss Paint a lot and I think this is choice B. But there's no obligation. You don't have to choose anything that you don't want to. So right, I'll see you on Monday. Thank you. Have a lovely rest of your weekend. Don't forget Paula's live at seven. Bye. Bye.